I'm going to explain JavaScript promises in the simplest way possible and show you a real world example of when you can use them in under 10 minutes. So with that, like this video, subscribe, and let's jump right in. So what is a promise? A promise is a guarantee that you'll get some kind of information back in the future. So for example, if a teacher promises to me that they will grade a test within four days, there are basically two outcomes. I either pass the test or I fail the test. So we'll create a variable here called past test and we'll set that equal to true. So in four days, eventually I will have passed the test. And what we can do is down here, we can create a new promise and the what this promise takes in is a callback function. So we'll pass in this function and this function has two arguments. One is a resolve function. The other one is a reject function. And what happens in here is this is where we do our logic and figure out do we resolve this promise or if we reject it. So in our case, if we pass the test, let's call that the resolve case. If I fail the test, that's the reject case. So I'll say if passed test is true, then what we want to do is pass our data to the resolved case. So we'll call the resolve function and I'll pass in the data as a string, say saying I passed the test. Now, if we have our other case of failing, we'll call that the reject scenario and we'll pass in a string called, oh no, I failed the test. So what we can do now is basically we've passed the data to the resolve if I pass the test and to the reject if I fail the test. And what we can do is let's just set this equal to a variable and down here, we can now handle this promise. And the way to handle this promise is you can chain this promise with a either dot then or dot catch method. And what that looks like is we have our promise and we can say dot dot then. And this then method also takes in a callback and it basically takes in whatever you expect to be resolved. So this is a message and we can name this whatever we want, but right now we're just going to call it a message. And what we can do is console.log and we'll say that we're in the then statement and then we will add on the message to that. So if we run that, boom, we pass the test and we're in the then statement. So what happened there is we went into this promise over here and on line four, we saw that pass test was true. So on line five, we resolved the data that we wanted to pass if we passed the test. So we sent pass the test as a string into this resolve function. And what happens down here is that gets resolved from promise and passed over to the dot then as the message argument. And then inside this function, this will be called after the promise resolves. And then we will console log the then and then the message. So next we can turn this to false and see what happens. So we'll run this again and we get a unhandled promise rejection warning. So that means that we haven't handled this promise failure in a way that either the browser or the human can understand. So we need to do that. So what we can do here is we can call the dot catch method. And again, this takes in a callback and this expects the error. And what is the error? It is this message that we've passed to the reject function. So what we'll do down here is we'll just say console.log and then error, and then we will write out the error. So let's try this. So now we expect that we get an error and then, oh no, I failed the test. So those are the basics for how we deal with promises and how we use chaining with dot then or dot catch. Next, I want to show you how these are similar to callbacks and also different. So over here, what we can do with our promise is we can create a function and we'll say this is a function and we'll say past test and then we'll call it promise. And what we'll do is inside, we will return the promise. And what we can do here is basically grab this, which used to be the promise variable, and we'll just replace it with the result of the past test promise function, which is just a promise. And what we can do over here is we can match how a callback would be equivalent to the promise. So what we can do is we can say function, we'll call this past test callback. Now this takes in a success 
callback and an error callback. And inside of here, we'll handle our logic. So we'll say if pass test is true, then what we do is we call our success function and we pass in the piece of data that matches up with that. So we can basically grab pass the test and pass it into here. And we can also do the same for the error callback. So we'll grab this string and we'll say error and we have, oh no, I failed the test. So then what we can do is we can call this function and we can write our callbacks right in line here. So we can say message and then down here, we'll just console.log and then success message. And our second callback is another function that takes in an error message <coughs> and we'll say console.log error and then we'll pass in that error message. So we have, oh no, I failed the test and that came out from the callback. So if I wanna say callback, oh no, I failed the test and that's coming from the callback. We'll do the same for the passing scenario and we'll run that pass the test from the callback. So I wanted to show you the main difference between using callbacks and promises and why promises are so much easier. So on the left hand side here, you have callbacks. And basically here, you have a bunch of these nested functions that keep going on and on and they make this triangle shape on the side. And that's basically what we call the pyramid of doom because it goes on forever. It gets really complicated to work with and this is totally not readable. Like if I come into a new code base and I'm looking at this, I, I'm just really, really confused. But on the left hand side, this is so readable. Nothing is nested. It's very consistent. And you can basically see what happens when you get this function. When, once this resolves, it gets passed here, which then resolves to here and then here and then here. And then all your errors are just handled in this one dot catch. And it's super, super clean. So if we were to double or triple the amount of code you'd have in here, this pyramid of doom would be huge. And then this would just be, it would be really clean all the way down. So that's the main difference of why promises are much more concise and easier to use than callbacks. So now I want to show you a real scenario of when you'd use promises. So I think this is a great way to solidify learning and also see how you can apply this to an actual application. So right now I pulled off a URL from github.com and that's basically an online code repository if you haven't heard of it and you can store code up there and I'm pulling off the data of the user Google which is at Google's actual account on GitHub. And what I can do here is I can use something called fetch which is baked into JavaScript and ES6 and I can pull all of the data from this URL by just passing it into fetch and this will make something called a get request and this will return a response that I can then chain a dot then on. And this is a great example of, of chained dot thens because what happens is the data returned is not actually readable by JavaScript. So we have to actually parse this and turn this into something that we can work with with JavaScript. So what I'm going to do here is call a method called dot JSON. So this will make it so we can actually work with this data. And then we can chain on another dot then and we have our response which is basically just this data passed in over here. And now we can console.log our response. So we'll copy this, we'll jump over to the browser, paste this in, and we'll see what we have to deal with. So see how this returned a promise and it was in a pending state. And then eventually we got to this point where it actually console logged all our data down here. So we can see we have a lot of data. So what we can do is let's grab the bio and grab that. So what we can do here is I can say Google's GitHub bio. And inside of here, I can just say response, which was this object and I can just grab the bio key. And what will this do? So we go back over here to the browser, paste that in and Google's GitHub bio and it says Google heart open source. So this was a quick intro to promises. If you have any questions or confusion, make sure to leave them in a comment below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Lastly, make sure to check out some of my other videos on the end screen right here. I have a handful more about learning the React framework and also how to get into the tech industry as quickly as possible. And different questions that you might have might be solved in some of those videos there. So make sure to check those out and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks again.